Chapters 17 through 22 of the Acts of the Apostles from the New Testament in Modern Speech. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Book of Acts, translated by Richard Francis Weymouth. Chapter 17 Then, passing through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they went to Thessalonica. Here there was a synagogue of the Jews. Paul, following his usual custom, betook himself to it, and for three successive Sabbaths reasoned with them from the Scriptures, which he clearly explained, pointing out that it had been necessary for the Christ to suffer and rise again from the dead, and insisting, The Jesus who I am announcing to you is the Christ. Some of the people were won over, and attached themselves to Paul and Silas, including many God-fearing Greeks and not a few gentlewomen of high rank. But the jealousy of the Jews was aroused, and calling to their aid some ill-conditioned and idle fellows, they got together a riotous mob and filled the city with uproar. They then attacked the house of Jason and searched for Paul and Silas to bring them out before the assembly of people. But failing to find them, they dragged Jason and some of the other brethren before the magistrates of the city, loudly accusing them. These men, they said, who have raised a tumult throughout the empire have come here also. Jason has received them into his house, and they all set Caesar's authority at defiance, declaring that there is another emperor, one called Jesus. Great was the excitement among the crowd, and among the magistrates of the city, when they heard these charges. They required Jason and the rest to find substantial bail, and after that they let them go. The brethren at once sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea, and they, on their arrival, went to the synagogue of the Jews. The Jews at Berea were of a nobler disposition than those in Thessalonica, for they very readily received the message, and day after day searched the scriptures to see whether it was as Paul stated. As the result, many of them became believers, and so did not a few of the Greeks, gentlewomen of good position, and men. As soon, however, as the Jews of Thessalonica learned that God's message had been proclaimed by Paul at Berea, they came there also, and incited the mob to a riot. Then the brethren promptly sent Paul down to the seacoast, but Silas and Timothy remained behind. Those who were caring for Paul's safety went with him as far as Athens, and then left him, taking a message from him to Silas and Timothy, asking them to join him as speedily as possible. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, his spirit was stirred within him when he noticed that the city was full of idols. So he had discussions in the synagogue with the Jews and the other worshippers, and in the marketplace day after day with those whom he happened to meet. A few of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also encountered him. Some of them asked, What has this beggarly babbler to say? His business said others, seems to be to cry up some foreign gods. This was because he had been telling the good news of Jesus and the resurrection. Then they took him and brought him up to the Areopagus, asking him, May we be told what this new teaching of yours is? For the things you are saying sound strange to us. We should therefore like to be told exactly what they mean. For all the Athenians and their foreign visitors used to devote their whole leisure to telling or hearing about something new. So Paul, taking his stand in the center of the Areopagus, spoke as follows. <clears throat> Men of Athens, I perceive that you are in every respect remarkably religious. For as I passed along and observed the things you worship, I found also an altar bearing the inscription, To an unknown god the being, therefore, whom you, without knowing him, revere, him I now proclaim to you. God, who made the universe and everything in it, he, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in sanctuaries built by men, nor is he ministered to by human hands as though he needed anything, but he himself gives to all men life and breath and all things. He caused to spring from one forefather people of every race for them to live on the whole surface of the earth, and marked out for them an appointed span of life and the boundaries of their homes, that they might seek God, if perhaps they could grope for him and find him. Yes, though he is not far from any one of us, for it is in closest union with him that we live and move and have our being, as in fact some of the poets in repute among yourselves have said, for we are also his offspring. 
since then we are god's offspring we ought not to imagine that his nature resembles gold or silver or marble or anything sculptured by the art and inventive faculty of man those times of ignorance god viewed with indulgence but now he commands all men everywhere to repent seeing that he has appointed a day on which before long he will judge the world in righteousness through the instrumentality of a man whom he has predestined to this work and has made the fact certain to every one by raising him from the dead when they heard paul speak of a resurrection of dead men some began to scoff but others said we will hear you again on that subject so paul went away from them a few however attached themselves to him and believed among them being dionysius a member of the council a gentlewoman named damaris and some others chapter eighteen after this he left athens and came to corinth here he found a jew a native of pontus of the name of aquila he and his wife priscilla had recently come from italy because of claudius's edict expelling all the jews from rome so paul paid them a visit and because he was of the same trade that of tent-maker he lodged with them and worked with them but sabbath after sabbath he preached in the synagogue and tried to win over both jews and greeks now at the time when silas and timothy came down from macedonia paul was preaching fervently and was solemnly telling the jews that jesus is the christ but upon their opposing him with abusive language he shook his clothes by way of protest and said to them your ruin will be upon your own heads i am not responsible in future i will go among the gentiles so he left the place and went to the house of a person called titius justus a worshipper of the true god his house was next door to the synagogue and crispus the warden of the synagogue believed in the lord and so did all his household and from time to time many of the corinthians who heard paul believed and received baptism and in a vision by night the lord said to paul dismiss your fears go on speaking and do not give up i am with you and no one shall attack you to injure you for i have very many people in this city so paul remained in corinth for a year and six months teaching among them the message of god but when gallio became proconsul of greece the jews with one accord made a dead set at paul and brought him before the court this man they said is inducing people to offer unlawful worship to god but when paul was about to begin his defense gallio said to the jews if it had been some wrongful act or piece of cunning knavery i might reasonably have listened to you jews but since these are questions about words and names and your law you yourselves must see to them i refuse to be a judge in such matters so he ordered them out of court then the people all set upon sosthenes the warden of the synagogue and beat him severely in front of the court gallio did not concern himself in the least about this after remaining a considerable time longer in corinth paul took leave of the brethren and set sail for syria and priscilla and aquila were with him he had shaved his head at sancriae because he was bound by a vow they put in at ephesus and there paul left his companions behind as for himself he went to the synagogue and had a discussion with the jews when they asked him to remain longer he did not consent but took leave of them with a promise i will return to you god willing so he set sail from ephesus landing at caesarea he went up to jerusalem and inquired after the welfare of the church and then went down to antioch after spending some time in antioch paul set out on a tour visiting the whole of galatia and phrygia in order and strengthening all the disciples meanwhile a jew named apollos came to ephesus he was a native of alexandria a man of great learning and well versed in the scriptures he had been instructed by word of mouth in the way of the lord and being full of burning zeal he used to speak and teach accurately the facts about jesus though he knew of no baptism but john's he began to speak boldly in the synagogue and priscilla and aquila after hearing him took him home and explained god's way to him more accurately then as he had made up his mind to cross over into greece the brethren wrote to the disciples in corinth begging them to give him a kindly welcome upon his arrival he rendered valuable help to those who through grace had believed 
for he powerfully and in public overcame the jews in argument proving to them from the scriptures that jesus is the christ chapter nineteen during the stay of apollos in corinth paul after passing through the inland districts came to ephesus where he found a few disciples did you receive the holy spirit when you first believed he asked them no they replied we did not even hear that there is a holy spirit into what then were you baptized he asked into john's baptism they replied john he said administered a baptism of repentance bidding the people believe on one who was to come after him namely on jesus on hearing this they were baptized into the name of the lord jesus and when paul laid his hands upon them the holy spirit came on them and they began to speak in tongues and to prophesy they numbered in all about twelve men afterwards he went into the synagogue there for three months he continued to preach fearlessly explaining in words which carried conviction the truths which concerned the kingdom of god but some grew obstinate in unbelief and spoke evil of the new faith before all the congregation so paul left them and taking with him those who were disciples held discussions daily in tyrannus's lecture hall this went on for two years so that all the inhabitants of the province of asia jews as well as greeks heard the lord's message god also brought about extraordinary miracles through paul's instrumentality towels or aprons for instance which paul had handled used to be carried to the sick and they recovered from their ailments or the evil spirits left them but there were also some wandering jewish exorcists who undertook to invoke the name of jesus over those who had the evil spirits saying i command you by that jesus whom paul preaches there were seven sons of one sceva a jew of high priestly family who were doing this jesus i know the evil spirit answered and paul i have heard of but who are you and the man in whom the evil spirit was sprang on two of them overmastered them both and treated them with such violence that they fled from the house stripped of their clothes and wounded all the people of ephesus jews as well as greeks came to know of this there was widespread terror and they began to hold the name of the lord jesus in high honor many also of those who believed came confessing without reserve what their conduct had been and not a few of those who had practised magical arts brought their books together and burnt them in the presence of all the total value was reckoned and found to be fifty thousand silver coins thus mightily did the lord's message spread and triumph when matters had reached this point paul decided in his own mind to travel through macedonia and greece and go to jerusalem after that he said i must also see rome but he sent two of his assistants timothy and erastus to macedonia while he himself remained for a while in roman asia now just at that time there arose no small commotion about the new faith there was a certain demetrius a silversmith who made miniature silver sanctuaries of diana a business which brought great gain to the mechanics in his employ he called his workmen together and others who were engaged in similar trades and said to them you men well know that our prosperity depends on this business of ours and you see and hear that not in ephesus only but throughout almost the whole province of asia this fellow paul has led away a vast number of people by inducing them to believe that they are not gods at all that are made by men's hands there is danger therefore not only that this our trade will become of no account but also that the temple of the great goddess diana will fall into utter disrepute and that before long she will be actually deposed from her majestic rank she who is now worshipped by the whole province of asia nay by the whole world after listening to this harangue they became furiously angry and kept calling out great is the ephesian diana the riot and uproar spread through the whole city till at last with one accord they rushed into the theatre dragging with them gaius and aristarchus two macedonians who were fellow-travellers with paul then paul would have liked to go in and address the people but the disciples would not let him do so a few of the public officials too who were friendly to him sent repeated messages entreating him not to venture into the theatre the people meanwhile kept shouting some one thing and some another for the assembly was all uproar and confusion and the greater part had no idea why they had come together 
then some of the people crowded round alexander whom the jews had pushed forward and alexander motioning with his hand to get silence was prepared to make a defence to the people no sooner however did they see that he was a jew that there arose from them all one roar of shouting lasting about two hours great is the ephesian diana they said at length the recorder quieted them down <clears throat> men of ephesus he said who is there of all mankind that needs to be told that the city of ephesus is the guardian of the temple of the great diana and of the image which fell down from zeus these facts then being unquestioned it becomes you to maintain your self-control and not act recklessly for you have brought these men here who are neither robbers of temples nor blasphemers of our goddess if however demetrius and the mechanics who support his contention have a grievance against any one there are assize days and there are proconsuls let the persons interested accuse one another but if you desire anything further it will have to be settled in the regular assembly for in connection with today's proceedings there is danger of our being charged with attempted insurrection there having been no real reason for this riot nor shall we be able to justify the behavior of this disorderly mob with these words he dismissed the assembly chapter twenty when the uproar had ceased paul sent for the disciples and after speaking words of encouragement to them he took his leave and started for macedonia passing through those districts he encouraged the disciples in frequent addresses and then came into greece and spent three months there the jews having planned to waylay him whenever he might be on the point of taking ship for syria he decided to travel back by way of macedonia he was accompanied as far as the province of asia by sopater the berean the son of pyrrhus by the thessalonians aristarchus and segundus by gaius of derby and timothy and by the asians tychicus and trophimus these brethren had gone on and were waiting for us in the troad but we ourselves sailed from philippi after the days of unleavened bread and five days later joined them in the troad where we remained for a week on the first day of the week when we had met to break bread paul who was going away the next morning was preaching to them and prolonged his discourse till midnight now there were a good many lamps in the room upstairs where we all were and a youth of the name of eutychus was sitting at the window this lad gradually sinking into deep sleep while paul preached at unusual length overcome at last by sleep fell from the second floor and was taken up dead paul however went down threw himself upon him and folding him in his arms said do not be alarmed his life is still in him then we went upstairs again broke bread and took some food and after a long conversation which was continued till daybreak at last he parted from them they had taken the lad home alive and were greatly comforted the rest of us had already gone on board a ship and now we set sail for assos intending to take paul on board there for so he had arranged he himself intending to go by land accordingly when he met us at assos we took him on board and came to mytilene sailing from there we arrived the next day off chios on the next we touched at samos and on the day following reached miletus for paul's plan was to sail past ephesus so as not to spend much time in the province of asia since he was very desirous of being in jerusalem if possible on the day of the harvest festival from miletus he sent to ephesus for the elders of the church to come to him upon their arrival he said to them you elders well know from the first day of my setting foot in the province of asia the kind of life i lived among you the whole time serving the lord in all humility and with tears and amid trials which came upon me through the plotting of the jews and that i never shrank from declaring to you anything that was profitable or from teaching you in public and in your homes and urging upon both jews and greeks the necessity of turning to god and of believing in jesus our lord and now impelled by a sense of duty i am on my way to jerusalem not knowing what will happen to me there except that the holy spirit at town after town testifies to me that imprisonment and suffering are awaiting me but even the sacrifice of my life i count as nothing if only i may perfect my earthly course and be faithful to the duty which the lord jesus has entrusted to me of proclaiming as of supreme importance the good news of god's grace and now 
i know that none of you among whom i have gone in and out proclaiming the coming of the kingdom will any longer see my face therefore i protest to you today that i am not responsible for the ruin of any one of you for i have not shrunk from declaring to you god's whole truth take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the holy spirit has placed you to take the oversight for him and act as shepherds to the church of god which he has bought with his own blood i know that when i am gone cruel wolves will come among you and will not spare the flock and that from among your own selves men will rise up who will seek with their perverse talk to draw away the disciples after them therefore be on the alert and remember that night and day for three years i never ceased admonishing every one even with tears and now i commend you to god and to the word of his grace he is able to build you up and to give you your inheritance among his people no one's silver or gold or clothing have i coveted you yourselves know that these hands of mine have provided for my own necessities and for the people with me in all things i have set you an example showing you that by working as i do you ought to help the weak and to bear in mind the words of the lord jesus how he himself said it is more blessed to give than to receive having spoken thus paul knelt down and prayed with them all and with loud lamentation they all threw their arms round his neck and kissed him lovingly grieved above all things at his having told them that after that day they were no longer to see his face and they went with him to the ship chapter twenty one when at last we had torn ourselves away and had set sail we ran in a straight course to kos the next day to rhodes and from there to patara finding a ship bound for phoenicia we went on board and put to sea after sighting cyprus and leaving that island on our left we continued our voyage to syria and put in at tyre for there the ship was to unload her cargo having searched for the disciples and found them we stayed at tyre for seven days and taught by the spirit they repeatedly urged paul not to proceed to jerusalem when however our time was up we left and went on our way all the disciples and their wives and children coming to see us off then after kneeling down on the beach and praying we took leave of one another and we went on board while they returned home as for us our voyage was over when having sailed from tyre we reached ptolemaeus here we inquired after the welfare of the brethren and remained a day with them on the morrow we left ptolemaeus and went on to caesarea where we came to the house of philip the evangelist who was one of the seven and stayed with him now philip had four unmarried daughters who were prophetesses and during our somewhat lengthy stay a prophet of the name of agabus came down from judea when he arrived he took paul's loincloth and bound his own feet and arms with it and said thus says the holy spirit so will the jews in jerusalem bind the owner of this loincloth and will hand him over to the gentiles as soon as we heard these words both we and the brethren at caesarea entreated paul not to go up to jerusalem his reply was what can you mean by thus breaking my heart with your grief why as for me i am ready not only to go to jerusalem and be put in chains but even to die there for the sake of the lord jesus so when he was not to be dissuaded we ceased remonstrating with him and said the lord's will be done a few days afterwards we loaded our baggage cattle and continued our journey to jerusalem some of the disciples from caesarea also joined our party and brought with them manasin a cyprian one of the early disciples at whose house we were to lodge at length we reached jerusalem and there the brethren gave us a hearty welcome on the following day we went with paul to call on james and all the elders of the church came also after exchanging friendly greetings paul told in detail all that god had done among the gentiles through his instrumentality and they when they had heard his statement gave the glory to god then they said you see brother how many tens of thousands of jews there are among those who have accepted the faith and they are all zealous upholders of the law now what they have been repeatedly told about you is that you teach all the jews among the gentiles to abandon moses and that you forbid them to circumcise their children or observe old established customs what then ought you to do 
they are sure to hear that you have come to jerusalem so do this which we now tell you we have four men here who have a vow resting on them associate with these men and purify yourselves with them and pay their expenses so that they can shave their heads then everybody will know that there is no truth in these stories about you but that in your own actions you yourself scrupulously obey the law but as for the gentiles who have accepted the faith we have communicated to them our decision that they are carefully to abstain from anything sacrificed to an idol from blood from what is strangled and from fornication so paul associated with the men and the next day having purified himself with them he went into the temple giving every one to understand that the days of their purification were finished and there he remained until the sacrifice for each of them was offered but when the seven days were nearly over the jews from the province of asia having seen paul in the temple set about rousing the fury of all the people against him they laid hands on him crying out men of israel help help this is the man who goes everywhere preaching to everybody against the jewish people and the law and this place and besides he has even brought gentiles into the temple and has desecrated this holy place for they had previously seen trophimus the ephesian with him in the city and imagined that paul had brought him into the temple the excitement spread through the whole city and the people rushed in crowds to the temple and there laid hold of paul and began to drag him out and the temple gates were immediately closed but while they were trying to kill paul word was taken up to the tribune in command of the battalion that all jerusalem was in a ferment he instantly sent for a few soldiers and their officers and came down among the people with all speed at the sight of the tribune and the troops they ceased beating paul then the tribune making his way to him arrested him and having ordered him to be secured with two chains proceeded to ask who he was and what he had been doing some of the crowd shouted one accusation against paul and some another until as the uproar made it impossible for the truth to be ascertained with certainty the tribune ordered him to be brought into the barracks when paul was going up the steps he had to be carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the mob for the whole mass of the people pressed on in the rear shouting away with him when he was about to be taken into the barracks paul said to the tribune may i speak to you do you know greek the tribune asked are you not the egyptian who some years ago excited the riot of the four thousand cutthroats and led them out into the desert i am a jew replied paul belonging to tarsus in cilicia and am a citizen of no unimportant city give me leave i pray you to speak to the people so with his permission paul stood on the steps and motioned with his hand to the people to be quiet and when there was perfect silence he addressed them in hebrew chapter twenty two brethren and fathers he said listen to my defense which i now make before you and on hearing him address them in hebrew they kept all the more quiet and he said i am a jew born at tarsus in cilicia but brought up in this city i was carefully trained at the feet of gamaliel in the law of our forefathers and like all of you today, was zealous for god i persecuted to death this new faith continually binding both men and women and throwing them into prison as the high priest also and all the elders can bear me witness it was too from them that i received letters to the brethren in damascus and i was already on my way to damascus intending to bring those also who had fled there in chains to jerusalem to be punished but on my way when i was now not far from damascus about noon a sudden blaze of light from heaven shone round me i fell to the ground and heard a voice say to me saul saul why are you persecuting me who art thou lord i asked i am jesus the nazarene he replied whom you are persecuting now the men who were with me though they saw the light did not hear the words of him who spoke to me and i asked what am i to do lord and the lord said to me rise and go into damascus there you shall be told of all that has been appointed for you to do and as i could not see because the light had been so dazzling those who were with me had to lead me by the arm and so i came to damascus and a certain ananias 
a pious man who obeyed the law and bore a good character with all the jews of the city came to me and standing at my side said brother saul recover your sight i instantly regained my sight and looked up at him then he said the god of our forefathers has appointed you to know his will and to see the righteous one and hear him speak for you shall be a witness for him to all men of what you have seen and heard and now why delay rise get yourself baptized and wash off your sins calling upon his name after my return to jerusalem and while praying in the temple i fell into a trance i saw jesus and he said to me make haste and leave jerusalem quickly because they will not accept your testimony about me lord i replied they themselves well know how active i was in imprisoning and in flogging in synagogue after synagogue those who believe in thee and when they were shedding the blood of stephen thy witness i was standing by fully approving of it and i held the clothes of those who were killing him go he replied i will send you as an apostle to nations far away until they heard this last statement the people listened to paul but now with a roar of disapproval they cried out away with such a fellow from the earth he ought not to be allowed to live and when they continued their furious shouts throwing their clothes into the air and flinging dust about the tribune ordered him to be brought into the barracks and be examined by flogging in order to ascertain the reason why they thus cried out against him but when they had tied him up with the straps paul said to the captain who stood by does the law permit you to flog a roman citizen and one too who is uncondemned on hearing this question the captain went to report the matter to the tribune what are you intending to do he said this man is a roman citizen so the tribune came to paul and asked him tell me are you a roman citizen yes he said i paid a large sum for my citizenship said the tribune but i was born free said paul so the men who had been on the point of putting him under torture immediately left him and the tribune too was frightened when he learnt that paul was a roman citizen for he had had him bound the next day wishing to know exactly what charge was being brought against him by the jews the tribune ordered his chains to be removed and having sent word to the high priests and all the sanhedrin to assemble he brought paul down and made him stand before them the end of chapters seventeen through twenty two of the book of acts from the new testament in modern speech recording by mark penfold